Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the crazy to happen in running this week. This week's stories include Anton's thoughts on running the Barkley Marathons, Rob Carr's secret FKT, and a new Lost Coast Trail fastest known time. We begin this week with a story on the lighter side of things. We've covered the combination of painting, art, and treadmilling before in our first year of Outhouse News with Let's Paint TV, but this takes it to a whole new level. Anthony Famigaletti has begun to produce some art he calls treadmill action paintings. He paints the bottom of his shoes or bare feet and then runs on the treadmill creating one-of-a-kind artwork on canvas rolls attached to the belt. Genius. Want a chance to win one? Follow his new Instagram page dedicated to this and other art at art underscore of underscore fam. If we thought we had it bad at this year's Barkley Marathons, you just wait. I got word by way of John Kelly's parents who live just south of Frozen Head Park that the area received torrential downpours this past weekend on what would be the normal weekend of the race. Something like three to four inches came down, flooding many rivers in the region and making certain parts of the park impassable. You just never know with the Barkley. A quick moment to recognize the tragic shootings in Boulder, Colorado, and what Ultra is doing to help. They have a custom limited edition Colorado flag shoe where 100% of the proceeds support families who lost loved ones. Please check it out. Now for some track news. This one caught my eye as it was a pretty big blunder. I'm actually not sure what NCAA race this was at, but in the steeplechase, there was a lap miscount. The athletes were given the bell lap one too soon. The guys from Flow Track in the stands filming knew as they were keeping track the whole time. It took an excruciating amount of time for the ladies to figure out they still had one lap to go, and by then it was too late as the race was lost. Painful. This week's episode is brought to you by Red Bull and the Wings for Life World Run. Taking place at 4 a.m. Pacific on May 9th, the event seeks to raise money to find a cure for spinal cord injury. Thousands around the world will start running at the same time and run as fast as possible until the virtual catcher car passes you. Info at wingsforlifeworldrun.com. The Race by Rams virtual challenge concluded this past Sunday and I, for one, was blown away by all of the participants. We do want to mention the winners. Carl Balloon climbed 71,549 feet to win the Vert Israel category, while Kelsey Lepard did for the women in 58077. In the virtual Vert division where treadmills are permitted, Kate Sells soared to the top of the ladies' charts, second overall with 92,249 feet, while Wayne Edward Ramage took the overall crown with 100,153, of climb in seven days. Speaking of vert, Ryan Gelfi took aim at Mike Foote's vertical schemo climbing record this past weekend. Foote did 61,200 and Gelfi was on track to beat that through 40k, but fell off pace as he struggled with sleep deprivation. He ultimately finished with 58,600 feet. Also putting in the vert was Dakota Jones recently for the Crush It for Climate Challenge. He ran 29.9 miles with 16,700 feet of climb in under 12 hours to help raise awareness for the Protect Our Winters group, who is focused on mobilizing the outdoor industry to act on climate change. Thanks, Dakota. Now into some FKT news. There's a lot of it. Rob Krar has been teasing out some imagery from a secret project he's been working on involving running, scrambling, and pack rafting near the Vermilion Cliffs. I have some insight on this as I was asked, asked to come help film him on the run portion of the route. I will have to say it was likely the hardest thing I've ever filmed and that says something. Just a few days post Barkley and Rob in full on race mode over brutal cross country terrain did not bode well for me, but it was a heck of a lot of fun. I'll tease out more once I'm given the green light. We have some excitement on the Arizona trail this past week as Joe McConaughey is currently shredding the AZT. He's shooting for 11 and a half days and has been throwing down 60 plus milers day after day thus far. As of the recording of this show, he is already above Flagstaff and depending on the snow conditions on the North Rim of Grand Canyon, should be somewhere between his target and the current record of just over 14 days. Amazing. Candace Burt is also reportedly gearing up for an attempt starting soon. 
Brittany Peterson, who by the way, just had a birthday, happy birthday, teased a photo on her Instagram, reminiscing about the big ditch herself and scheming about a return. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Now more action on the Backbone Trail in the Santa Monica Mountains outside Los Angeles to report on. Wyatt Million, who I'm not too familiar with, just lowered the record on the 67 mile point to point route in 10 hours, 13 minutes, shaving six minutes off Avery Collins record from December. Wyatt previously got second at AC 100. And another iconic California route was also lowered, this time on the Lost Coast Trail by none other than Black Canyon 100K winner, Tyler Green. He is the first to break 10 hours, finishing in nine hours, 59 minutes, 47 seconds, taking 10 minutes off Jeff Mogavero's time. Corey Waltering, also in the news with an FKT, start on the Pinhoti Trail is imminent. Updates next week on that one. Something like 300 miles plus. Hey there, if you're enjoying this week's show, please drop us a like in the video and comment below a story I missed this week. A couple of big announcements concerning Anton to report on. This from an interview with Treeline Journal. First, Anton has announced he is on the start list for the Leadville 100 this summer. He's running 50 miles a week right now with 25 mile long runs in addition to all of the cycling and climbing he regularly does. Time will tell if he can stay healthy through his summer build. Anton also sheds some light on his future at the Barkley Marathons. When asked if he would ever run, he was quick to give a no. That's a hard no. And then further saying he wouldn't want to waste an effort on a looped scavenger hunt through the woods. Touche Anton, touche. To each his own. The Arizona six day race held in Douglas wrapped up and featured 13 athletes according to race director Gary Cross. This was the 19th edition and the only results we could find were on Gary's Facebook post with Bobby Keogh winning with 256.5 miles, John Radich second with 201. Another iconic Arizona race, the Crown King Scramble 50K went off without a hitch. Kim Dobson of Colorado swooped in with a 431.44 victory for the women which is the second fastest all time here. Steven Kirsch won for the men in 351, fourth fastest all time. Shout out to my brother Nick and his wife Lauren, who both placed third. The Stillhouse 100K, coming to us from Soddy Daisy, Tennessee. Uh, is that a real place? Well, yes, it actually is. It's located just north of Chattanooga. The race saw 23 finishers with Andrew Laramore winning in 1252, and Shannon Wheeler DeBoof, first woman in 1408. Shout out to friend of the program, Jem Rooney, who will be towing the line of the Backyard Blister Race this weekend. His original backyard he was training for called Dead Cow was canceled last minute, and just after some wild flooding prevented Jem from leaving his town for many days. Let's see what he can do and if he will nab that Backyard Australian record of 46 yards. In this week's bonus story, only available for Patreon supporters, we'll go deeper into what String Bean is doing on the Arizona Trail. More race cancellations in Europe. The Volvic Experience, part of the Ultra Trail World Tour, was just canceled, and the Mozart 100 was also recently postponed until September. This comes just as France is now on a brand new 30-day lockdown. Things aren't looking very positive for UTMB. Our final story of the week is from the Lake Sonoma 50, sharing that ultra legend Paul Rink passed away recently. He was a Sonoma County grape grower, family man, CrossFit stud, and an aid station captain there since 2008. Thank you for tuning in to episode 197 of Outhouse News. Be sure to subscribe to get the latest episode. And if you'd like to support the show, please join Steep Life Media on Patreon, where you'll enjoy bonus content each week, right from me, for as little as $2 per month. We want to mention by name our $25 level supporters and up at the $100 level, Brian Sands, at the $50 level, Squirrels Nut Butter, Mark Grabowski, Peter and Patty Curry, as well as our $25 level supporters, Carrie Savage, Michael Perez, Nick Bailey, Steve De La Cruz, York Peach Runner, Michael Adams, and 10 Junk Miles. And finally, if you'd like to own this week's pair of Jam Jam sunglasses, check out the link below. 
Have a shitty week.